Hey y'all, welcome back to Down the Breather Hole. My name is Brian, and today we're going to be looking at my Lamy Vista. I've had this pen for five or six years, I think. It was my second or third pen that I ever got, my second or third fountain pen. I don't remember exactly what order they came in, but it was among the first. So I've had it for quite a long time, and it's accumulated some wear and tear, so I want to show you how it's held up over time. And of course, we'll do a writing sample, talk about pros and cons and all that kind of stuff. But the main point of this video is to show how this pen lasts and show kind of what I think about it after using it for so long. So let's get started. All right, here we go. Here is our Lamy Vista fountain pen. So let's just do a quick overview of the features. So you've got a little X finial on top. It's kind of interesting. I don't have any um, ballpoint or rollerball Lamy pens, but I've heard that they have a different symbol up here so that if you have a cup full of these pens, you can tell which are the fountain pens and which aren't. Um, you've got this love it or hate it clip. I actually quite love it. It's very functional and very unique in the fountain pen world, but I know that not everyone loves it. You've, get, you've got a ink window here so that you can see your ink, which on the, Lamy, well, on the Lamy Safari, it's very helpful and cool. On the Lamy Vista, it's very redundant. <laughs> um, I know that the Lamy Vista is basically just the clear version of the Lamy Safari, um, so I get that it's easier to just use the same molds or whatever, but um, it still bugs me that this has ink windows when they're completely unnecessary. Um, and especially since these aren't, um, here, look at my Lamy Safari here, they aren't quite the same pen. They're very, very close. But um, one difference you can see here is the logo is engraved and it looks really nice. I've had this pen for a few years, it still looks really good. Here, there's no engraving, it's just a stamped chrome-colored painted logo, which has all but worn off. So that's one difference between the two pens. So I'm like, if you're gonna have that difference, couldn't you just do something different here? Make it more interesting? I don't know, I guess I'm being picky or something, but it still bugs me to have ink windows on this uh, demonstrator, but, it's still a cool looking pen. I do like the look of it a lot. Um, I like this chrome colored outer part of the inner cap. That looks very nice. It's a lot more distinctive and showy than something like your Pilot Kakuno, which just has this really ugly white inner cap. I think it's ugly. Um, good pen though. Anyway, um, then you've got your standard uh, removable steel Lamy nib. I like these nibs. Um, they're not quite as um, cool looking, I would say, as some other pens out there that have more of the traditional nib. Uh, for example, I've got my Twisby Swipe here. So it's got the flares on the side that the Lamy nibs don't have. I don't know. I like them both. I really do. And then, of course, you've got your also love it or hate it grip section here, this triangular grip section. I don't particularly care for the grip section. Um, I make it work. It, it serves its purpose, but I don't find it to be the most comfortable grip section out there. Um, I actually, I don't know exactly why, but I prefer the grip section on the matte Lamy Safaris over this more gloss finish that this pen and some of the other Lamy Safaris have. So um, that's a pretty brief overview of the pen. So let's talk about some longevity stuff here. And uh, we can just take a look at how the pen has held up over time. So like I've already mentioned, the logo has all but worn off, which I think is kind of a shame. It looked really cool. I don't know. It just makes it look pretty worn out but 
it's a very cosmetic thing that's not affecting the function of the pen, which ultimately that's what you get pens for, right? Is to use them. So um, it's still a usable pen. We'll talk more about the usability in a minute here, but um, let's look at some of the other wear and tear. To do that, I actually have something I'm gonna try. So these are macro filters for a DSLR camera that I have. Um, I don't use them for photography hardly at all. They're um, a, a poor substitute for a, a macro lens that would cost hundreds of dollars, if not thousands. But but this kit was like, I don't know, $15, $20. And you basically just get this set of really cool magnifying glasses. So it serves a similar purpose to a loop, but I can show you better on the camera what things look like under the magnifying glass. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the close up four, four times and the 10 times. And the cool thing about these is you can screw them together to create 14 times the magnification. So let's see how this works. I'm gonna turn the light on here. Hopefully that helps. Let's take a look. Let's start with that logo there, see if it picks it up. Oh yeah, look at that. Cool. Uh, it's a little warped. It's not, it's really not the greatest magnifying out there, but it's still cool. It's uh, a nice big thing that will help me show you what this pen looks like. So one thing I wanna point out is since this is a demonstrator, it has become stained with ink way down where the pen connects to the cartridge or the converter. Yeah, there's a big ink stain right there. That's on the inside. So maybe I could get in to clean that out with something really skinny, but it would be kind of difficult. So I haven't really bothered to do that. So that's one thing that happens sometimes with uh, cartridge converter demonstrators. Um, my Kakuno here is kind of the same way but you just start to get some ink splotches on the inside of the pen a little bit, and it's hard to get those out. So that's one reason why I, I prefer demonstrators like a lot, uh, wow, not a Lamy Eco, a Twisby Eco, because they um, don't have so many open holes where uh, dust or ink or different things are gonna get inside. I've also just got a lot of dust on the inside and like, I don't know, some kind of like skin particle. I mean, it's kind of nasty. I need to clean this thing out. Um, but yeah, I don't like how, because of these holes here and these holes up here, the inside gets dirty and I don't really like that as, as much. Um, the dirt's not the end of the world. You can clean that out pretty easily, but it's a little bit annoying. As far as scratches, there's not much to speak of. I mean, this is really good plastic. Um, it's durable. Um, yeah, it's it's good plastic. I like it. I like the, the material it's made out of. So the body itself, aside from this logo thing and then some of these stains here, it looks pretty good, honestly. The, the place that you see scratching actually is the cap and it is quite scuffed up. Let's see if my magnifying glass here can help at all. Yeah, so you can see it's quite scratched and then ink gets into the scratches and just kind of looks a little bit dirty. I mean, really it just adds character. It's not really a big problem. My point in showing you the wear and tear of a pen isn't to show that it's a bad pen, because all pens are gonna get wear and tear on them over time, it's just what they do. But some pens wear better than others. So I'm just kind of trying to give you this information so you can know what to expect if you have one of these pens, or if you just got one of these pens, um, and you're wondering how it will hold up, or if you're considering, but you're not sure if it's really gonna be that durable or whatever. But there are a lot of scratches here. The reason for that, is because I used to post this pen quite a bit. I don't post my pens so much anymore, but 
back in the day when I was posting my pen, basically the end of this pen, or the end of the barrel, um, goes in here and just starts to rub um, pretty significantly on the inside of the cap. And there's, uh, it's not really a design flaw. I don't think there's anything they really could have done differently to make that better. In fact, I, I actually really admire the way they've designed this pen to post because it posts very snugly and securely, and yet you're not rubbing the whole barrel on the inside of the cap. It's really just here. There's either a very like ever so slight tapering to the barrel or an ever so slight tapering of the cap that's not really noticeable to the naked eye, but you can feel it when you go in there. It starts to, to catch once you hit a certain point. And I like that because you're not going to scratch up the barrel of the pen. The barrel looks great. Um, as opposed to the Twisby Swipe, which I've had for about two months. And I've capped it a little bit since the cap is so light. It's a much more pleasant experience to cap. But just all along there, you can see these scratches that have come because it doesn't have that same tapering. It's the whole barrel that's rubbing on the inside of the cap. So I, I like the way that the Vista and the Safari were designed. Um, let's see if I can get that to focus for you. Goodness. It probably doesn't know what to do with this magnifying glass. I'll just get rid of that for now. But you can kind of see just how the light is catching this right here. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite scratched. And I've only had this pen for a couple of months. So um, again, not really a problem. Pens get wear and tear, they're meant to be used, but I like how this is a little more resistant to some of that wear. Um, and really it's, it's great if you have an opaque Lamy Safari because the whole pen looks absolutely beautiful. Um, it probably has those same scratches on the inside, but you can't see them. Um, so it's really just, the demonstrator version having that problem of, of being able to see those scratches in there. But I really do like how this pen was designed. Okay, I wanna talk about the nib and we'll do a writing sample here in a second. Um, I generally like Lamy Safari, or I, I guess it's not just Safari, it's just the, the standard Lamy nib. I tend to like them. I've got a black fine on this one. This is my petrol edition of the Lamy Safari. And this is just, oh, so buttery smooth. It's so great. Um, it's a newer nib. I got it to replace a, a bad extra fine nib that I it just was awful. Um, but this one, I remember it being that buttery fine when I first got it. And it's really not anymore. And I'm not really sure why that would be. I've tried tuning it and all of that kind of stuff. I don't know if this is going to give us enough magnification to see the point. Oh, it just doesn't like focusing on that point. There we go. I mean, it's not great. I should probably get my loop out, but you wouldn't be able to see it. It looks pretty well aligned though. Um, if I were just to do my fingernails here. Yeah, it feels pretty well aligned. Another thing I've noticed is this pen is quite a bit drier than this one. They're the same nib size. So I don't know if that's just the slight differences that, uh, from pen to pen. That's pretty normal to have a slightly different nib, slightly different experience, even within the same model. I don't know. I don't know if it's that or if the pen is a little bit drier now, like the feed's gotten all kind of gunked up or something with uh, deposits. I'm not really sure what it is, but it's it's a drier writer than my other Lamy pens. Yeah, but I actually haven't used this in a while because I haven't been super duper happy with it. So um, we'll get it out. Maybe I remembered wrong. Maybe we'll be pleasantly surprised here. But yeah, so let's get some ink out and we'll ink it up. Okay, got it all inked up here. I put some Noodler's Black in it because that's the ink that I have used the most, I think, in this pen. Um, and so I, I kind of want to compare how it's writing now to my memory of using this ink. 
and it's a pretty well behaved ink in general anyway so it's a good ink to test pens with i have a different converter in here than the standard one for the lamy safaris um darn it i don't remember what they're called z something let me look that up really quick the z27 yeah this is the lamy z27 so the one that you would normally use with a Lamy Safari is a Lamy Z28 converter. Um, that's the red one with a little red twisty thingy. I got this one because I heard that they fit and that they look cool with the Vista and it definitely does look cool. It kind of makes the pen look a little bit more uniform and classy. So I like that. It's not quite as firm a fit. Um, and actually one thing that I've noticed with this pen is that the converter does not fit as securely as it used to. So I think that the, the spot where you kind of plug it in has broken in a little bit. And so it's a little bit looser. It's not a problem if you have the, oh gosh, what is it? Z, Z28, the, the, the red one. If you have the red one, then you got the little knobs that click in there. So it's not going anywhere. But with this one, um, I was a little worried about it, but I tested it out a little bit and I think it's I think it's fine. It just doesn't feel as secure anymore. One thing I forgot to mention is that I've swapped nibs on this a bit, and I have the nib is kind of a little bit loose now. It's pretty easy to take off, and there's just a little bit of wiggle in it. Nothing crazy. I'm not sure if it's the feed that's wearing out or if it's the nib that's just been stretched out a little bit. But over time, I've noticed just a little bit of give develop in the way that the nib fits on there. Anyway, let's do a writing sample. So I'm gonna write a quote by Fred Rogers, who is one of my heroes. And then we will uh, talk about the quote, and we'll talk about the writing experience um, as well. So, here we go. Okay, so if you can't read my handwriting, I don't blame you. <laughs> I did my last one in cursive, um, but I decided to just go for it in my usual handwriting this time. So it says, if you could only sense how important you are to the lives of those you meet, how important you can be to the people you may never even dream of. There is something of yourself that you leave at every meeting with another person. I think that's something that's really important for us all to remember. I'm sure that every one of us has either struggled with mental illness or knows someone who has in a severe way. I've had loved ones who have taken their own lives and it's so sad and it's something that I, I don't really pretend to understand, but I just hope that everyone I know, uh, anyone watching this video can understand that they are important and that their life is important and that they matter and they might not even really be able to see all the ways they matter in the long run, but, but you do matter. So remember that. Okay, let's talk about the experience. Um, it's wetter than I remember. I remember it being dry to the point where even though it was still decent to write with, the Noodler's Black had kind of a, almost a yellowy tint to it, like almost a sepia kind of thing. Or sepia? I don't know how you say that. But uh, anyway, uh, it felt reasonably wet 
Um, not anything crazy, but um, wet enough. So that was nice. Um, I did notice, let's see if I can recreate this for you. Um, it was doing this weird thing where it was almost like squeaking as I wrote. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure what the deal was there. Um, one thing I struggle with, with the grip section here and the way that it's lined up is, um, even though I use a triangular kind of fairly standard grip, um, I always want to put the pen down like this. So the nib is like kind of leaning to the left there and that's not good. So I was noticing a lot of scratching as I was writing, but honestly, a lot of it might have been me leaning the nib too far over. So it feels really awkward to try to plant the nib completely flat on the page with this grip. I always want to lean it a little bit. So that's what bugs me about this. So I did notice some of the scratching is because I was writing too far on the left side, but I also noticed um, it's it's like scratchy as a nail if I, if I tip the pen up too high which is interesting because my Lamy Safari is not that way. Um, scratchy, yes, but but doable. Not that you're gonna write at a completely vertical angle, that's not how I think anyone writes, uh, with a fountain pen at least, but it's nice to be able to have some options as you're writing to angle the pen. And so, um, yeah, it's interesting. It's a, it's still a perfectly functioning writer. Um, my, my Vista is, but I, I did notice it's not as pleasant as this. And I don't know if that's just a variation in the pens themselves, or if it's because I've used this one and had this one like twice as long as I've had this one. I'm not sure. Um, I hope this was, review was helpful, not completely confusing. I do like this pen. It's not perfect. I think that there are some quirks, some issues with it. I prefer, like I said, the matte finish, Lamy Safari, but it's still a good pen. It's still a good starter pen. It's a pretty, pretty nice looking demonstrator. Yeah. What do you think? Let me know. I'd love to hear. And I'll talk to you later.